cooking, everybody. Here we are again. It's so nice to be here. All right. What's good, Jets fans? And anyone else who happened upon this obscure little corner of the youtube -iverse? Welcome. I am Green Bean, and welcome to episode 104 of Green Bean's Jets Pod. 104 episodes. And let me be frank, it should be probably 200 or so, because boy, oh boy, did I tell myself I was going to make a podcast for a while. I'm going to do a podcast. That's right. I'm going to make a podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready for my podcast. What you doing? I'm writing down some notes from my podcast. A year later, what you doing? My podcast. <laughs> it takes a minute. The best thing I can tell anyone out there who's contemplating making a podcast, the best advice I can give you is just do it. If you guys have seen episode one of Green Beans Jets Pod, you, if you haven't, go check it out, man. It's, a, it's the weirdest thing. I'm on the side of an RV in Fort Lauderdale uh, off of Oakland Park Boulevard. My hoses and cords are everywhere. I have an Uncle Eddie Christmas story hat on. I just put a microphone on a plastic table and plugged it in, man. And that's how it all started. Episode 104. I am grateful. I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that I get to have this connection with a lot of you guys. Uh, it makes me, uh, it makes me uh, just uh, incredibly connected. Like, I feel that. And I love it. There was a time, man. I had like four Jets fan friends in a sea of blue. And that's what we had. Matter of fact, I had friends like in high school or whatever. The only reason we ended up being friends is I saw them walk down the hall in a Jets jersey and they saw, hey, wait, hey, you like them too? Yeah, you know, my father. <laughs> and that was our whole connection and we ended up being friends. So now it's just crazy. You can be in Iowa. You can be in Guam or the UK or, or Germany or Ireland or up in New England, you know? And you can be like Jets fans. And here we are. So cool. So cool. What a world, everybody. So we are here. This is episode 104 of Green Beans Jets Pod. Like I said, and what we like to do here is slow things down just a smidge and have some time to, to open up and dissect some ideas. That's what we like to do. The comment section is robust. And uh, the reason why in my, in my head is that because we explore things, it's not a quick hit. It's not a, you know, a couple guys having 30 seconds to real quick, get their ideas out. Nope, nope, nope. We just take as much time as we need. But I think it's a good thing, man. We like to, we like to open up and, you know, we have segments every week, which gives us a little bit of structure and we like to keep it in there and kind of talk about what's going on with this friggin team that we are somehow trapped with uh the new york jets now the good news is guys is that uh, a lot of us old heads a lot of us not all of us but a lot of us old heads can see it there is a change happening now we've seen it before you know when parcells came we saw the change when rex came and he adopted mangini's team kind of took it to that next level you felt it you felt that change for two two years <laughs> about you could say three but really two you felt it since rex yeah the todd bowles 2015 thing was fun but a lot of us will tell you man it, it it wasn't it wasn't the same brandon marshall eric decker chris ivory like mangold was still here so we had some stuff we had some chops revis was back cromarty was back we got gilchrist and buster screen and brino giacomini i think you know so we had some guys but you, you knew that it was like uh if we don't do it today this is this one ain't gonna last fitzpatrick right you knew how many times we got to see Fitzpatrick go from Fitz Magic to Fitz Tragic? How many times? So we knew it was fun. And I really just, I can't believe they didn't make the playoff. I just can't believe the way that one ended. Rocked me, that one. 
but this is different. It, it has a different feel. You know, one of the reasons that I say that we'll talk about in this episode, we'll break it down a little bit and talk about it in a little bit more detail. The honor ceremony, the Jets rolled through that honor ceremony, man. If you don't know what that's about, we're going to talk about it. If you're paying attention on any level, I'm sure you already do, at least to some degree. That's never happened in Jetsville ever before, what we saw the other night. So that's one of the things. The other thing is like, you know, you look around and, and, and players are proud to be here. Now, we have our difficulties like everybody else. Maybe a little request for a trade over here. Maybe a little sucky sucky over here. It happens, you know, there's a lot going on. But overall, you can see it. There's a different vibe. Now, it'll go away. We keep losing, having any more late season collapses like we did. It's not going to last forever, man. You got to keep the balls in the air, right? You got to keep it going. Remember uh, Will Farrell in the, uh, in the office with the uh, imaginary juggling routine? Remember that? It's really good. If you never saw it, you got to Google that and look it up. It's funny. But that's, you know, that's not real. You have to be able to keep this stuff in the air, keep it going, managing the personalities, keeping the budget, you know, the whole thing, the talent, the injuries, everything. You have to be able to keep this going. But the truth is, if we can get out of our own way here in our thinking, in our, the truth is the trajectory is steadily going up, even including that late season collapse. So we're going to get into all that. We'll break down a couple rumors. We'll talk quarterbacks. And we'll talk about all that stuff right after we talk about our sponsor for the show. None other than Manscaped. Guys, I couldn't be happier to tell you about this amazing thing. This is the Beard Hedger. Okay, look at this thing. It's stunning. Okay, stunning. The Now look, it's an awesome buzzer. Right, Manscaped makes awesome products. I'm not sure if you've used any yet. You've heard us all talk about them. It's true. It's, the, it's real. Their products are top shelf stuff. All of it. The Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker, the Cologne, the Creams, the, the Crop Reviver, the Ball Desensitizer, all the stuff that they make is like awesome. This is the newest thing right here. The Beard Hedger. See? Manscaped. Now, it's an awesome buzzer, but this is the main thing. From my perspective, here's what it does. If you have a buzzer anywhere around your house, for your hair, for your beard, whatever it is, you have all these attachments, these guys, everywhere. There's blenders and ones and threes and fours. And they're everywhere. There's no good way to store them. They give you pockets in these little bags. They never stay in there. It's a mess 100% of the time. I've had them for 25 years. They're a mess. This removes all of that. This thing right here, you see this wheel? That's how you change the settings. It has like 25 different settings. Everything you need. You hear all those clicks? Here. Here we go. Start. That's all different settings. Oh, oh, you got to be on. Oh, ow, man. Turn it on. My advice is to turn it on before you do that. Like I just, I just ripped three or four hairs out of my face. It alleviates the entire mess of those little attachments and stuff. It's all built in to this very easily used little roller. Guys, it's epic. And it seems like a simple idea, but once you see it, it's like, Eureka! But they're the ones that did it. They're the products that have it. And this is just the latest in a long line of awesome sauce. Kind of, I don't say inventions, but advancements in technologies we've been using for a long time, ergonomic and all that jazz, that change everything. Guys, go to manscaped.com, get yourself some of the best men's grooming products below the waist and now above the neck. Grooming products on the market today. And listen, if you're going to do it, you might as well save yourself 20%. When you get to checkout, type in the promo code GREENBEAN 
and you're going to save 20%. And as always, the code also gets you free international shipping. What could be better than this? 20% off of a fantastic product you're going to love and use daily, if not at least weekly, and free shipping. They'll send it right to you. Whatever. Yeah, where are you? I'm in East Jabib. Here you go. Free shipping. Take 20% off. So that's how you do it. Go to manscaped.com. The link is in the description for you to make it nice and easy. Use the promo code GREENBEAN. Save yourself 20%. And that, as they say, is that... Dun, 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 dun. So there you go, Manscaped. And I want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring this week's episode of Green Beans Jets Pod. Now, from the sponsor, I just want to make one little plea. A short little plea. If you're here and you're hanging out with us, there's a couple things that you could do and help the channel grow a little bit. First, you can hit that little thumbs up button. Try not to forget to hit that little guy. It means the world. And even bigger than that is the subscribe button. You click that subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. And you're reminded, you're recommended all the videos that we make here. And it's greatly appreciated sincerely from me to you. Thank you. So the first thing that we like to get into in this Jets pod is our weekly player profile inspired by the number of the show that it is. This week being 104, we're going to dive into the number four on our team currently, and that is what just might be Joe Douglas's finest free agent acquisition, none other than cornerback DJ Reed. Oh. What a good one, huh? Last week, we talked about Jordan Whitehead. Mm, not so great. Okay, right? Not terrible, but not what we hoped. As a matter of fact, he may even get cut this year. Not what you hoped for when you signed him. DJ Reed, on the other hand, boy, oh boy, are we happy with this guy. Now, he's not quite at the level of maybe Sauce Gardner. That's fine. Right? It's, our, it's our group. Right, you have Sauce Gardner, the rookie, uh, first team All Pro, Pro Bowler, and very recently the Defensive Rookie of the Year. You gotta love that. But his partner in crime with slot guy Michael Carter II, a fifth round pick, by the way, Sauce Michael Carter II, and now DJ Reed really make up one of the elite cornerback groups in the entire NFL. It's, you know, look, and we're not just saying that, like, from a fanboy perspective. It's true. Now, let's talk about DJ Reed a little bit. He comes over here as a 5'9", 190-or-so-pound cornerback. <laughs> he was drafted in the fifth round of the 2019 or 2018 draft. Number 142 overall by the San Francisco 49ers. Interestingly enough, the Robert Sala led 49ers. Yeah, he was on the, he was the defense guy, and he famously tried to put DJ Reed in a little compart, you know, a little compartment called slot nickel, right? That's what Sala thought DJ Reed was. It's a it's a it's a conversation piece anymore, right? So here's what happened with DJ Reed. DJ Reed was not the starter. He was not the outside guy. Uh, he played to, on their Super Bowl team that they lost in uh, 2019. And in 2020, he gets hurt early in the season, and he ended up being a non-football injury list waiver guy. So they, they cut him, put him on waivers, and the Seattle Seahawks went and scooped him up, brought him over there. Now, an injury to one of to their starting outside cornerback, Quentin Dunbar, gave DJ Reed the very short opportunity to come in there and play on the outside. What does he do? He comes in and he makes a pick. Then he's there a couple weeks and he plays better than the starter. Super strong play to the point that when Dunbar was healthy, they just... They left DJ Reed in the position. He played there for two years, uh, got better and better and better, so much so that Seattle Seahawks fans were furious when the Seahawks chose not to resign him and let him go to the Jets. They were very mad. They didn't like it. They liked their young cornerback that was kind of homegrown in many respects. They liked him. They let him go, and we grabbed him. 
and Robert Sala had to face the music. He's now an outside guy. He's a starting level outside cornerback. And he comes in here, and guys, he plays lights out. He's one of the better cornerbacks in the NFL. Now, depending on the statistical analysis you're looking at and the angle of those analyses, he's somewhere in top 15, top 10. In some instances, he's in the top five of cornerbacks in the NFL. Now, there's a lot, there's also a little bit of a low roar about Xavier Howard. The cornerback that made it in, you know, to the Pro Bowl next to Sauce Gardner, his stats really were not as good as DJ Reed's. DJ Reed in the AFC should have made it over Xavier Howard, and Xavier Howard kind of made it on rep, reputation, you know. And that's baloney. We've seen it before. It's nothing new with the New York Jets. DJ Reed wasn't happy about it, but the whole thing is whether or not he gets voted into the Pro Bowl or beyond. It doesn't take away what he did this season. Now, DJ Reed, again, is probably the best free agent acquisition that Joe Douglas made. You couple him with Sauce Gardner and Michael Carter II, and we are locked in at cornerback. Now our backups, Brandon Eccles, Bryce Hall, and the like, could be starters in this league. They're relegated to, you know, fifth or fourth and fifth cornerback, sixth in some instances. That's what we're looking at. We are deep at the cornerback position, and DJ Reed is a big part of that. Here's the most interesting thing with him. He's only 26 years old, so he's been on the Niners. He went through the Seahawks. He's already played for a year with the New York Jets, and this guy isn't going to be a 27-year-old until November of next year, November, in the middle of the season, toward the end of the season. This is still a young cornerback. We have him for two more years, and I think that his arrow is pointing up, and he's highly motivated. Doesn't like getting snubbed because he's five foot nine, a buck ninety. People are looking at him, and he's a he's an afterthought yet again. DJ Reed's a motivated guy to continually get better, make his name known. And I love it. There he is, DJ Reed. Love having him. Love his attitude. Love him next to Sauce and Michael Carter. Think it's amazing. And that is our player profile of the week. Yeah, man. It's good to have good players. It's amazing to have good players. Not just sign guys, you know, overpay them. So they come here and then they play a few games. They break an injury. You know, they they injure their toe. And they, eh, I'm good. You know what I mean? They're just here for the paycheck. That's not what's going on with a lot of these guys. And talking about DJ Reed, this is a guy that's that's still trying to make his career, make his name in the NFL. And that's the kind of player that you want to bring over. And DJ Reed, I mean, who doesn't love DJ Reed? You know, everybody loves DJ Reed. So we're going to talk about a lot of look, a lot's happened this week, man. A lot has happened this week. This is a big week, jam-packed full of news and we're gonna dive into all of it in this week's news of the week so the first thing we have to talk about i just can't i was gonna talk about another one i just can't do it i have to talk about this year's nfl award ceremony or honors ceremony as they're calling it because a rare thing took place Things that have never happened for us as a fan base took place. And not only uh, did one thing happen or two things happen or three, we saw four home run hits in the same award ceremony where fan bases all over the NFL were like, what? How the who? Wait. They didn't like it one bit. Namely, the Seattle Seahawks fan base. They were furious. They didn't like it one bit. But here's what took place. First, we saw... Offensive Rookie of the Year get named, and it was none other than our wide receiver, Garrett Wilson, who, look, if there's a player to fall in love with this year, it was Garrett Wilson. No doubt. I mean, for me specifically, I dude, he's got everything I love to see in a wide receiver. It's that drive. It's that screw you, I can beat you attitude. I love it. He's got fire like we just haven't seen here. Even when guys have been good, there hasn't been that fire that you see with Garrett Wilson. He takes the Offensive Rookie of the Year award, 
And this is the cool thing about it. The Jets have never had one before. No, not we haven't had one in a few years. Not it's been 25 years. Nope. Since the merger of the AFL and NFL into one league in 1970, two years before Green Bean was even born, the New York Jets have never had an offensive rookie of the year. And we've had some goodies, right? We, we've drafted a, a guy or two. Keyshawn, right? He's, he's good. Blair Thomas, right? He's good. Johnny Lamb Jones, all these guys, right? Lots of good guys in the, for, in the first round. So we haven't had one offensive rookie of the year. Garrett Wilson becomes that guy. And even cooler, man, like, look, we can't prove anything. It's all hypothetical, of course. But if you looked at the trajectory of one Brees Hall, what he was doing for this team and throughout the NFL, if that guy stayed healthy throughout the whole year, forget it if even AVT stayed healthy. If Brees Hall stayed healthy for the whole year, this just might have been a two-man race and both of them being Jets. That's very real. Brees Hall, sad to say, got injured in the Denver game, and we never got to see what the rest of the season would look like for him. But no worries. Garrett Wilson stepped right in and just kind of lit the world on fire for us, and he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Now, Seattle was upset that maybe Kenneth Walker didn't. And look, he had a good year, too. Nobody's going to take anything away. But I don't think... Uh, I don't think he touches what Garrett Wilson did. 1,100 and change with four separate quarterbacks, all of them having mm, difficulties, let's say. So the fact that he was able to pull that together, it's not just the guy catching bombs, which is important, which is good, which is all that. Nothing to take away from that. But Garrett Wilson made a lot of those yards himself, making two, three, five guys miss on the same play. He did it from his first catch as a pro. Go ahead. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google Garrett Wilson's first NFL catch. You'll see it. We were there. We stared at it. We couldn't believe it. It started from that first catch. Holy macaroni, what's that? We have never seen that before. Garrett Wilson, nothing but deserving I can't wait to see his career continue. We got to get him a quarterback, right? We got to get him a quarterback that's going to hit him consistently. Because let me share something with you. Those 1,100 and change yards just might have been uh, 1,500, 1,600 if we were able to hit him every time he was open. Or most. I mean, there were so many times he's running around free. Nobody sees him. Nobody can get him the ball. And that's the kind of stuff that we hope to, to capitalize on. We have receivers, you know, uh, spearheaded by Garrett Wilson that, uh, that are open, man. These guys are open. They can beat their guys, and we got to get them the ball. If we do, Garrett Wilson's career, it's just starting with this guy. He's going to be the best in the NFL. We're talking first-team all-pro type of stuff. I don't want to jinx him. But that's how I feel. Now, that was followed by Defensive Rookie of the Year. Could you imagine a clean sweep, Sauce Gardner? I mean, look, you, anywhere you go, you look at top cornerbacks, no matter what site it is, unless it's a site based in Seattle, no matter what site it is, top of the heap, Sauce Gardner. Everybody's talking about this guy. Not only is he the Rookie of the Year, he's just probably the best NFL cornerback in 2022 as well. And seeing these two young studs, our first two picks in this year's draft, come out and win Rookie of the Year is, again, something we've never seen, man. Not only did we never win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but only defense four or five times in our whole history. So seeing them together, this is historic, man. And I love, I see all these comments on Twitter, man, like about, oh, well, look, they were the first, you know, top five and a top 10 pick. You're supposed to hit on those. Those are no big, yeah, you're supposed to. Tell me how many times the Jets do, okay? So I don't want to hear it, man. Like, stop limiting, stop mitigating the, the amazing potency 
of what this means for us. Maybe for the Steelers, no big deal. Maybe for the Patriots or, or the Cowboys, or maybe it's no big deal. For us, it is monumental. We don't do this. We don't get to see this. I don't care if it's the second overall pick. We whiff. That's what we do. We whiffed on Zach. We whiffed on Sam. We whiffed on Blair Thomas. We whiff on Milliner. We whiff on everybody. It doesn't matter where they're picked. Just because we picked them in the top tens means that it's a foregone conclusion. Well, guess what? There were nine other players or eight other players in the top ten that didn't win rookie of the year. What about that? What about the other 30 players that were taken in the first round that didn't win rookie of the year? What about all the rest that didn't win rookie of the year? It's a big deal, guys. Stop looking for the way to take away some of the oomph. For God's sakes, it's a huge deal. Sauce and Garrett won, and deservedly so. The Jets aren't that team that kind of gets the benefit of the doubt and screws over the little guy. We are the little guy. And we did it. But that wasn't it. That's followed by a little stroll onto the stage for this year's Hall of Fame class. Oh, look at that. We know him. That's Darrell Revis with the greatest cornerback season in NFL history. 2009. And that's just the crowning jewel of his career, of course. I mean, the guy's elite. The funniest thing about this class, from my perspective, is that there were two guys on there, Reggie Wayne and Andre Johnson, neither of who made it. Not to say they don't deserve to make it. I think both of them do and will. But as far as being first ballot Hall of Famers, dude, head to head, Reva shut both those dudes down. Both shut down by Revis, another guy on the docket to be voted into the hall. How could you possibly vote Andre Johnson in over Revis when they both had great careers and when they went head-to-head, Revis like, just made him an afterthought? Same thing with Reggie Wayne. You had to put Revis in, and I think it's rightfully so. So we see a very rare first ballot Hall of Fame. Yes, we've had Curtis Martin. Yes, we've had uh, Kevin Mawai. Anytime we get for, you know, Hall of Famers, it's like, you know, they played for somebody. What, you know, we can account uh, Ed Reed, Alan Fanica. You know what I mean? What? True Jets? And nobody's like, uh, you know, 100% their entire career Jets. We don't see that very often. Even Namath. It, but it's few and far between for us. And seeing Revis, who, yes, he was traded to the Bucks. Yes, we completely floundered the pick we got. Yes, they cut him, making the third into a fourth that we received the second year. Yes, he went to the Patriots and won himself a damn ring. But other than that, bookends, Jets, uh, and Jets. All right? So he's a Jet. We know it. Everybody knows it. Okay? Just like Ed Reed's a Raven. We know it. Everybody knows it. Alan Fanica is a stealer. We know it. Everybody knows it. It is what it is. But Revis is a Jet, first ballot Hall of Famer, strolls right out there, and everybody gets to see. On the same night we won Offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year, we also got ourselves a first ballot Hall of Famer. But that's not all! Order now and get yourself an extra Ginsu knife. We got to see Joe Namath, Bring out Joe Klecko. Now, guys, I know. Look, man, I am acutely aware of what Joe Klecko must be to so many of you. I know what, like, Emerson Boozer and Matt Snell and Don Maynard are to me. I didn't watch those guys. I've never seen a single snap outside of film, game film, you know, classic games and things like that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, they're great, but they don't, they don't have that impact on me. So I know for a lot of you, you know, look, if you've been a fan since the Parcells era or the Rex era, you don't know. Joe Klecko doesn't mean anything to you. He's just a guy that all your gray-haired Jets fan brothers and sisters complain about. I understand. But here's why it's so 
critically important. The Jets had a stretch. The New York Jets had this length of time where no matter how good a player was on this team, on this franchise, they never got looked at. It's the truth. Again, Kyle Clifton, linebacker in the 80s and 90s, led the league in tackles numerous times, had the most ever solo tackles, uh, but somehow Ray Lewis it has that, has that uh, label. You want to know why? Because they didn't start keeping it until 2003. Kyle Clifton did it in the 90s. So uh, forget about him. Not one Pro Bowl, not even an alternate, dude. Kyle Clifton was a complete afterthought by the league. Mo Lewis, arguably one of the best linebackers of all time. I don't want to hear it. Drew Bledsoe, I don't want to hear it. Go back and look over Mo Lewis's stats and compare them to the guys that were getting in those years. Junior Seau, Derek Thomas, and the like. Great players, without a doubt. But Mo Lewis was better. More well-rounded. 3-4 outside, sure, I'll rush the... You throw a 4-3 in, yeah, sure. Inside, outside, weak, Sam, doesn't matter. Put him there and he dominates. He did that for 12 straight seasons for us. He didn't get a, a single Pro Bowl nod until Parcells came here. That's And then all of a sudden, all pro, all pro, all pro. Yeah, because Parcells wasn't going to have it. Well, Joe Klecko was probably the peak of all that. One of the truly elite defensive linemen in NFL history was completely forgotten. If guys like Howie Long didn't use their Hall of Fame speech, their acceptance, Howie Long accepting his jacket and bust talked about Joe Klecko. If he didn't do that, if Gary Myers and Peter King didn't get voted or whatever it is, get onto the NFL senior committee, Joe Klecko never makes it. This could just be the beginning of the NFL turning around and going, wait a second, holy shit, look at these guys. But nobody cared. Don't forget, there was no internet. If you weren't good, nobody saw you. Remember inside the NFL back in the day? It's the only real show we had. You had like the news, the games, and NFL. You had HBOs inside the NFL. And when you sucked like we did, they would give you a two-minute, if that, man. Sometimes our game was reviewed in less than 30 seconds. And the Jets played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There was a catch. There was a fumble. There was a touchdown. The Jets lost 24-17. Like, that was it. And then they'd do 40 minutes on the damn Steelers. So if you weren't on that team, doesn't matter how good you were, you were forgotten. It's time. Joe Klecko getting in is something so big for the overall franchise, Jets fans. We all should be proud. It's big, and it just might be the beginning of the NFL not being allowed anymore to forget about the players that are great over here. So what if the team isn't all that good? If the player, is, he should get the damn accolades. And Joe Klecko made it in, man. Because we were relentless. Relentless. And Peter King, Gary Myers, and Howie Long. Um, with some others as well. But they led the charge. I'm grateful. And Joe Klecko. So first ballot, swept the defensive rookie and offensive rookie of the year awards. And then it's capped by Joe Klecko getting in with Joe Namath giving him his jacket, stopping by the house. Hey, Joe, it's Joe. You know what I mean? It's amazing. And we should all be proud. I get it that it's not your era. I believe me. If anybody gets it, it's me. You should still be proud. Wear it. Feel it. Make yourself love it. Because it's big. It's big for the future, guys. It's big for the future. Don't get it twisted. Now, what else happened? So we had that. That was a big deal. I'm still buzzing from it. I like that. But another thing came out that, uh, you know, look, we've been talking. Look, we're Jets fans, right? We're, and if you're watching this video, more than likely you're like an analytical, like, you know, stats get nerd. Like, we look at everything. We're on PFF. We're, we're into this. You know, we're on draft tech. We're doing all that stuff. 
We know that. So most of us kind of broached the subject already about potentially cutting car loss. Now, why? Well, because we saved $15 million in a year that, an odd year, where the Jets just don't have all that much money. And it just so happens that the quarterback plan that we had doesn't look like it's going to work out, right? This team was built to succeed during Zach Wilson's rookie contract. You can see it. If Zach Wilson was even a top 15 quarterback, this team's going places. It's the truth. It's the truth. So, didn't work. The one piece that didn't work, and injuries and everything, that you have to deal with. But Zach Wilson, at least up to this point, didn't work. So, we have to go out and get somebody, more than likely a pretty expensive fella, whether it's Rogers, Carr, uh, Jimmy G, whoever it is, more than likely is going to cost a pretty penny. So you have to look at this stuff. Carl Lawson's the guy. He costs the most. You get the most relief if you cut him. And it just so happens that we have a little bit of depth on the defensive line. So the question is, now, they'll look, again, we looked at it. You assume the question is, is it really the best move to cut Carl Lawson right now? Is it really the best move for the team? Now, a rumor came out this week that it's kind of official. Now, rumors are rumors. Remember, smokescreen season, uh, speculation season, just straight up lying season. That's what this is. That's where we are. So you can't believe anything. There are, you know, tears, of course, the Rappaports, the Schefters, even the, the Glazers. Like, they're a little bit stronger of reports. Well, this one came out, and it said that uh, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion the Jets are going to move on from Carl Lawson and recoup that 15 bill. And by bill, I mean mill. 15 million bills? I think that's what I was shooting for there. So they're going to recoup $15 million, and that obviously helps. Add that to Corey Davis if we do, in fact, move away from him. And now look at that. You got 25 and change, million dollars, just like that. 25 mil, boom, just like that. You got the extra 16 mil from the NFL. Now we're talking about 31 million or 41 million bucks, just like that. Boom. 41 mil, from nothing to 41 mil. So you have to look at this stuff. But it might be a wiser idea, everybody, to restructure him. Get him down, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, do a bonus, spread it out. Because the idea would look, he's 27 years old. He'll be 28 next year. Get him to 30 here. Get him 28, 29, 30, spread it out. Four years, you know, three years, whatever it is, with voidables at the end. You just prorate all this stuff across the length of the contract and do it that way and keep them as opposed to hoping that, you know, a guy like Bryce Huff or Michael Clemens or, or Jermaine Johnson I'm not so worried about. But the other two, while I love them in their roles, you know, you don't want to necessarily expect them to be able to be full-time players, you know. You, you, I don't know. You just you don't necessarily want to do that. And find out real quick that those guys are role players. You know, who knows? You can't expect that. Carl Lawson, guys, this was his second best statistical season in his whole career. And he's coming off that Achilles. So next year, theoretically, is going to be better. He had his impact. 24 quarterback hits, nine tackles for a loss, seven sacks. And the number one most heldest dude I've ever seen in my life. i never seen anything like it. Straight up, just a close lines on Carl Lawson. And no flag. It's crazy. So his impact is real. His impact was felt. And I fear losing that with this assumption. Now, oh, yeah, we'll just fold one of these other guys. I love the other guys. I don't want to just assume. So we have to talk about that. Now, this rumor, again, we don't know how substantiated it is. We don't have any real backing for it. Anyone can say anything this time of year, and you got to take it with a grain of salt or believe it and overreact, whatever your cup of tea is, of course. You can do whatever you'd like. But, you know, we have to look at this in such a way where you wonder, is it really the best move? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say this now. I'm going to tell you. 
I'm in the camp of restructuring Carl Lawson, taking that money, extending him, spread it out, maybe knock it down a little tick. Say, hey, look, man, we'll guarantee you two more years if you knock it down to 12, whatever it is, and then we'll spread it. And that, There's ways, man. I'm no mathematizer, so I don't know. It's not my gig, man. It's not my area of strength. But mathematizers are all over the place. We probably have one or two on our employ. Get them on the case. Mathematize this. Mathematize it. Get it done. I want to keep him and I don't want to pay any money. There you go. Figure it out. Yet I want him to be rich. So get it done, mathematizers. That's the way to do it. So we don't know. Carl Lawson's a big one, man. Corey Davis is a big one. Uh, you know, McGovern is a big one. But McGovern's a free agent. Carl Lawson just might be the biggest decision we have to make with guys under contract this year. And I'm very curious to see what it goes. I know a lot of Jets fans are assuming he's gone. I don't know. I kind of was too. As I think about it more and more, I, I don't know if I love it. So what else? We got Derek Carr. Listen to this. Derek Carr came out. He went, you know, they granted him permission to meet with the Saints. He goes down there. He's hanging out in New Orleans. He's hanging out at the voodoo shop. Mama LeBeau or right Marie LeBeau, he's having the uh, really Zeppelis. I was on to tell you, man. Beignets, beignets, they're delicious. Don't get me wrong. A Cafe du Monde, I went there. We went. I was excited. We went there. They were delicious. Dump them in the coffee. You get a bunch. You got to eat some, dunk them. You got to do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to tell you right now. Go to the Jersey Shore. Get yourself some Zeppelis. It's the same thing. If not better, up there. I'm just going to say, no, I'm biased. It is what I love them. Not saying that. But so Carr went down there. He goes to Cafe Du Monde. He goes to Marie Lebeau's voodoo shop. He does all the stuff. Takes a horse-drawn carriage down to French Quarter. And he comes out and he says, mm, no. I will not grant a trade to that shit box of an organization. <laughs> That's what he said. I mean, uh, he may or may not have said shit box. I can't confirm, nor can I deny that he said such things. No matter how you slice it, though, he said no. What does that mean? It means that the Raiders really screwed the pooch here, man. They could have handled this a significantly different way respectfully let him finish the season and maybe you have that agreement where hey man let us get a pick let us get a third we're gonna let you go wherever you you tell us we're gonna make it happen just let us get a pick no problem but josh mcdaniels is gonna josh mcdaniels dude this is what he does the guy's a pos we know that and he, look, the most recent actions support everything we thought we knew about this guy. Ask a Colts fan. Ask a Broncos fan. They'll tell you. The only guys that even like him a little bit are the Patriots, and they don't know why. They did Tom Brady. That's all they know. Tom Brady looked good with him. Yep, 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 yep. So Josh McDaniels completely blew it. Now Derek Carr wants, he's motivated to stick it to them. He don't want to. He don't want to help them in any way, shape, or form. Even if he does go to the Saints, he might even choose them. He's not. He doesn't want the Saints to have to give up a single shred of draft capital. We'll do it for a seventh. No. So now it looks like they're gonna have to release him. I thought it was slim chance that that would happen. He don't care. He said no. So this puts everybody on equal footing, except the Saints who now have obviously had a little bit of time to meet with them. That's fine. But the Jets, in my opinion, we should go full bore toward this dude. What do you need? Cupcakes? Haircuts? What? What else could you possibly need? You know what I mean? Whatever you need. We got Garrett Wilson. Send Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, Denzel Mims, uh, Brees Hall, all to meet him and just give him a big hug and go, dude, this is where you want to be. This is where he goes, yeah, I know, but who's going to block for me? I said, we don't know. We, we just don't know. We got a lot of guys coming back from injury, though. Big ones. Makai Becton, Elijah Veer Tucker, Max Mitchell. All kinds of fun guys. And we still got Dwayne Brown and all these Nate Herbigs. We're going to have them. We're going to put all our resources. You come here. Everything we do in the offseason is going to be to protect you. Everything. We love you. That's what I would do. 
I'd get him in here and whatever's going to happen while the dark room experiments happen, I would just get him. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. Whether or not the Jets do that, I don't know. A report came out that the Jets are definitely consider, going to consider guys that may become available. That has to be him, right? It has to be him. Who knows? But anyway, that was big news, man. It looked like a foregone conclusion. That's where he's going to go. And he comes up and he says, mm, no. No. We'll do it for a fifth. No. That's it. So, hey, man, that, that definitely shuffles the deck. Okay, so we don't know what's going on with that. Now, we have some more to talk about. We're going to get into a little Jeremy Fowler rumor, but we'll save that for the next segment because that is the news of the week. So holy macaroni, these rumors, right? And quarterback, 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 quarterback. It's all anybody wants to talk about. You bring out defensive end, they're like, oh, what do you think about Rodgers? What about Baker Mayfield? There was a discussion on Twitter about Jameis Winston. He throws a lot of touchdowns, man. And there's an, that's an incomplete statement. And? Yeah, he throws a lot of interceptions. Yeah, he does. He throws a lot of... What a crazy statistic, man. 33, his last year in Tampa anyway. 33 touchdowns. Not too shabby. 33 <laughs> interceptions, man. That's crazy town. So, I don't know. Jameis Winston, I'd be just a backup. Love it. Love Jameis Winston as, as number two. Love it. Number one, I don't feel too good. All right. So we're going to get into a specific rumor that Jeremy Fowler put out there just this morning when I'm recording this. But we're going to get into that in this week's Intelligent Gripe. All right, now look, we've been dancing around this. I haven't really officially commented on the dark room thing. Now, look, uh, if you guys have been hanging out with me a little while, you know I'm not so much stuck on, on, you know, in any box, right? I explore all kinds of shit. Like, you know that. I don't have the same extreme feelings about the four days in the dark about Aaron Rodgers. I don't. I'm an exploratory guy. You know, uh, sensory deprivation. A lot of guys, I talk to guys about, like, what the hell are you talking about? In my world, it's like, oh, yeah. I mean, half my friends have done it. You know, with acupuncture and, and meditation. I've done gong meditation with Sikhs on the full moon. Like, all kinds of wacky stuff. I stayed in a tent. Not a tent. A, a real life, you know, real live TP in the mountains. I mean, so far in the mountains, you lost cell phone coverage an hour before you got there in the North Carolina, Tennessee border mountains. And, uh, you know, to do a shamanic retreat where we channeled our spirit animals like i've done all this stuff man so i'm kind i have a foot i have a toe in this world right i've hung out with jedi realists i've harnessed energy using shigong like you can feel, i can almost feel it right now wait a second oh i got it yeah i got it I want to, what I asked my instructor, I said, okay, now I, I got it. I feel, she, do you feel it? I said, I, I absolutely 100%, it's tangible. I can feel the ball of energy. I can feel it. How do I hurl this at someone? How do I throw this? At? She's like, mm, that's really not what we're doing. All right, then I got to go. I got to go. It's like, get your your virtual baseball bat. Like, how do I hit somebody with it? That's eh, not what we're doing. Why do I have a baseball bat in my hand? A spiritual energy baseball bat. You know what I mean? I got the ball. What do you do? Can I shoot it? So anyway, I've done all sorts of stuff. So the four days in the dark by Aaron Rodgers, while I wouldn't necessarily maybe at this moment in my life do it, I get it. I understand I've craved like a silent retreat for years. Now, partially so I don't have to listen to my own damn voice for a few minutes. Right? That's, that's a 
beginning. But then the other thing, I just want to not be, I don't want to hear anything, right? Now, the dark, I don't know, there's spiders and shit in the dark. There's sp- like when somebody's afraid of the dark, you know, it's like they're not afraid of dark. Nobody's afraid of darkness. You're afraid of what you think is in the dark. Like as soon as you shut the light off, there's a guy with an axe. Like that's what you think is in the dark. You think a fucking spider is going to come out. Ah! That's what you think. All right? It's not just dark. Who cares? Dark is nothing. The snakes. <laughs> Whatever it is. Some old lady is going to bite my ankles. Like that's what it is. You know what I mean? Nobody's afraid of the dark. It's afraid of what it is. What your brain tells you is in the dark, which is really the reason why someone would go in the dark. Combat that stuff. Have no real escape. I mean, you can if it gets real bad, but no, you just sit there and you and you battle through it. That's the whole goal. So I get it. Now, would I do it? No. And let's say this. While I get it, do I want to wait for his ass to be finished with the damn dark retreat before we know if we have a quarterback? I don't. I'd rather just go get Derek Carr. That's me. If Derek Carr's like, yeah, I'd love to go to the Jets. And yeah, okay, good. It's a we're going to wait for Aaron Rod. Well, the Saints and the Titans, everybody wants to talk to me. Yeah, we're going to wait for the dark room to be over. I don't like it. So there's that. That's how I feel. So I'm in the middle somewhere, right? Now, Jeremy Fowler came out with a, a report today, or this week, let's call it, and said that the Jets have officially inquired about his availability, Rodgers, that is. With the Green Bay Packers. So it's fun. we've been talking about this for months. And today we get the report. Oh, the Jets have called the Green Bay Packers asking about armor. Are we supposed to believe that Robert Sala and best buddy, best man at the weddings back and forth, firing his little brother with Malavoy? Are we supposed to believe they haven't broached this topic? Is that what we're doing? Is this what we're doing? Can we stop? I know there are rules. I know. Can we stop? Are we supposed to be? How many Jets fans are are there? What, 12 million, 5 million? What what are are we? Are we 5 million boneheads? Is that what they think we are? I mean, and then you add the Packers fans. What is there, 10 million Packers fans, maybe more? So let's say 30 million people all collected. Then you got the rest of the NFL, the reporting structures and all that. Do they think there are 50 million complete idiots? Is that what we are we supposed to believe that this is the first time? Hey, I know you haven't heard from me in four months, but I would like to inquire as to the availability of dark room superhero Aaron Rodgers. Oh, that surprises me. I didn't think you guys would be interested. I know. it's great. It took us. Look, we interviewed Hackett, and we never brought up a single quarterback's name. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I thought you, I thought you might have. Nope. Nope. Not one. No, nope. we talked about quarterback, but we didn't bring up any names, and that includes Aaron Rodgers. So we finally, we've had our two weeks of meetings, and we've come to the conclusion we'd like to reach out to you to uh, inquire as to the availability of Aaron Rodgers. What do you say? What are you looking for? Two firsts? A first and a third? If we throw in Corey Davis, will you throw in Bakhtiari? Huh? Where are we with this? baloney these guys have been chit-chatting it up for months they already know i'm of the belief that joe douglas the reason if we're not seeing any interest in Derek carr to the slightest i am of the belief maybe i'll be proven wrong it would not be the first time it's rare very rare but it wouldn't be the first time i've been wrong I am of the belief that Joe Douglas at least has a pretty high level of confidence that this deal's already done. Aaron Rodgers wants to go into the dark, just make sure. I want to float in the tank. I want to smoke a little grass. You know what I mean? Do whatever I do, a little little, uh, psilocybin. I want to lick some frogs and all those kinds of things. I'm going to come back. I'm going to make sure it's what God wants. Okay? Fine. 
but the handshake, the the compensation, everything's done. I believe that. That's what I believe. Hackett's here, all kinds of fun stuff. So anyway, it's official. <laughs> the Jets have reached out to the Packers. Amazing. What good boys we are. We don't even, we would never break a tampering rule. Now, while Sala and, and LaFleur are on the couch together, you know, surfing, looking at all the games, they didn't go, hey, you want to get rid of Aaron Rodgers? They didn't do that once. Hey, you want Aaron Rodgers? What, what would you give me for Aaron Rodgers? Oh, hey. <gasps> I can't talk to you about that. We get in trouble. Only if I said something, I might say something. I can't trust me. I'm the worst. <laughs> it's like Michael Scott. I'm going to blow it. I'm going to say it. You know, those kinds of, come on. So here it is. I believe that everybody knows, hey, look, maybe not 100%, nothing's done till it's done. I get it. I know that that is very true. But I'm of the belief the whole thing is either done or or not done that will govern which direction we move if we do in fact chase Carr or you know what jimmy g or maybe we really love baker mayfield who knows but we're not going to do any of that if we think we have aaron Rodgers at least beyond a reasonable doubt it's all done in my opinion and that is the intelligent ground <laughs> Yeah! All right. Aaron Rodgers is going to be a Jet. You heard it here first. And I'm in, man. Like I said, Derek Carr is probably my number one, but I get it. I get the whole thing. Aaron Rodgers, Hackett, you know, Zach Wilson under Aaron Rodgers. It all makes sense. It's puzzle pieces. It all fits together. I'm with it. I get it. I like it. I support it. And honestly, I think that this team is ready-made. We get the offensive line. If the guys stay healthy, we add a little bit to it. When we stay healthy, I'm a firm believer, man, that we get a real quarterback, especially if he's an elite quarterback, we're going places, man. It's going to be hard to stop us, and I believe it. And that's why I like what we've done so far. Like, <laughs> four years ago, like, remember when we were talking about getting Kirk Cousins? Why the fuck would Kirk Cousins come here? Why would Kirk Cousins come here? You got no offensive line, no weapons, our running backs are garbage, and we have the 29th rate defense. Like, yeah, sure. They're going to pay me $3 million less in Minnesota. Dude, get out of here. You know what I mean? Nope. You think you bring Cousins? Like We couldn't say that the team was ready for Kirk. We hoped Kirk Cousins could save us. That's not what this is. We need a quarterback to be good. That's what we need. We have everything else in place. And if he comes here, man... I believe it's a, I believe it's own like Donkey Kong. That's what I believe, man. That all said, listen, this has been a fun show. I'm out of here. It's the Super Bowl time. I got uh, 30 minutes until the Super Bowl starts. We're going to do that. We're going live. Not that you'll see this before I do it. This will be released afterwards. So I don't know who won. Go birds. I've made my decision. Green, screw it. That's all I need. Green, go birds. There it is. Let's see if I'm right. Guys, thanks for being here. I love hanging out with you. It's a fun, fun time. Don't forget to hit like on the way out. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Don't forget about our sponsor, Manscaped, and the new Beard Hedger. Even if you don't have a beard, dude, Manscaped is the absolute best. You'll love it. Save 20% with the promo code GREENBEAN. With that all said, have a great Super Bowl and a great rest of the week. And as always... Go Jets.